And finally, the moment we all have been waiting for. I know, I know, it's been a while, but you know, it's never too late for a third episode of editing your photos. Roll the intro. Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Rens. I'm a digital artist from the Netherlands and currently I'm living the fan life. So this is my camper fan and office and studio named Taro. Now in editing your photos, I'm gonna edit your photos and today's submitted photos are submitted by Varun Singh. And I'm sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Anyways. The submitted photo is this one right over here and honestly it isn't the best photo but I want to show you that with a bit of editing skills you can actually make a mediocre image look super awesome with some awesome photo manipulation techniques. Now Varun Singh had a message for me and the message said I am Varun from India and I love your tutorials of Affinity. I usually don't click my own photos. This is the latest one. I hope you will create more tutorials in the future and get as many subscribers as possible. So thank you so much Varun for submitting your photo and let's dive right into Affinity Photo and let's edit your photo. So for the next edit, we're definitely not going to need the original background. So for this photo, I started off by cutting out the subject with a pen tool and mask out the background. This always takes some time and is very boring to watch. So let's skip this part. All right. Once I got rid of the background, it was time to find him a new one. For this, I simply went into the inbuilt stock panel once again. I typed in urban and after scrolling a bit, I found this interesting city image, which gave me cyberpunk vibes. So I decided to go for the futuristic look. I dragged in the new background onto my canvas, resized it and repositioned it with the move tool until I was satisfied. Since the picture wasn't in perfect focus, I figured that we could trick our eyes a little bit by blurring the background even more to make it seem our subject wasn't that out of focus after all. Also, by blurring the background, we can separate the subject from the background. For this, I decided to use the lens blur live filter. Up until this moment, I wasn't fully convinced yet if I was able to create what I had in mind. So I quickly practiced some highlights using a recolor adjustment layer. At first this didn't really work out that well, but it definitely was worth a try. To really give this image a cyberpunk feel, I made the colors pop more using an HSL adjustment layer. Once I was satisfied with the cyan and magenta colors, it was time to add some glow. To create the pink glow, I clipped the pink fill layer to the background, set its blend mode to color dodge, then inverted the layer mask with the keyboard shortcut Command or Control i and then gradually painted back the effect with a soft round brush with very low flow. The great thing about this technique is that you're basically using the mask of a fill layer to paint in the effect. In other words, we can show more of the effect by painting in with white and mask out the effect from certain areas using black. For the cyan glow, I simply repeated the process, except I used a cyan fill layer this time. And as last, I figured out that this last billboard also needed some red glow. So I repeated the same process once again to add a red glow above our subject. Hey, real quick, if you've been enjoying this video so far, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you like my content overall, make very sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to learn more photo manipulation, then I highly recommend you check out my free masterclass in which I'll give you my three secrets to better composites in Affinity Photo. Links down below in the description. All right, let's get back into the video. Once I was happy with the background glow, it was time to blend the subject in with the background. So I needed some glow on the subject too. For this, I used multiple recolor layers. First, I created a pink one and used the inverted mask to paint back in an overall glow on the subject. And then I rinsed and repeat the process for the cyan glow. Because the photo was not fully in focus, I used a small soft round brush with pen pressure to paint back in separate hair strains. This obviously is pretty time consuming and it might not even look very good right now, but at the very end of this edit, you will see that it was for a very good reason, which I didn't even expect myself. Since his hair wasn't in focus, I decided to blur my painted hair strains as well to match it better. Then I created a color balance and a vibrance adjustment layer and tried to match the subject even better with the background. To keep the attention of the viewer in the middle of the image, I used a simple big soft round brush to darken the bottom part of the background. Once that was done, it was time to add some rim lights. And guess what? For this we're gonna use more fill layers. 
I started off with a pink one, used blend ranges to make it look more realistic, inverted the layer mask and painted back the effect with a, you guessed it, white soft round brush. First his left shoulder and then the right one. To finish darkening the bottom part of the image, I clipped an exposure adjustment layer to the subject. I darkened it a whole lot, inverted the layer mask and then painted back the effect. There you go. Then I used the pen tool to make a selection of the arm, which obviously also needed some pink highlights, and paint those in too, as well as the highlights on the left side of his face. Finally, it starts to look like the subject and the background belong together. Awesome, but we're not done yet. At the beginning, we created three glows for the background, the cyan, the magenta, and not to forget, the red one. So also for this one, I created a separate fill layer and painted back some red light in the hairs. Alright, that doesn't look that bad at all. To add to the futuristic cyberpunk vibes, I figured it would be cool to create some hologram screen. So let's do that. I found this space interface on Google, I mirrored it and set a blend mode to screen. To match it with the perspective of the phone, I used the perspective tool and then masked out his hand. To enhance the effect, I darkened the shadows in the background using exposure and blend ranges. In my mind, holograms are some kind of cyan green color. So to add this, I created a recolor adjustment layer, set the color to cyan, added a motion blur to soften the edges and set the blend mode to soft light. I then masked out the hand and well, that looked pretty cool. Now of course, this hologram screen is a light source too, so I needed some more cyan. For this I created another recolor adjustment layer, set it to a pretty bright cyan, inverted the layer mask once again and painted back the effect in the face, on the hand and on the phone. To improve and enhance the hologram effect even further, I figured the thing could use some glow by itself. So I added both an inner and an outer glow. And I was very surprised with how that turned out. I then figured the whole thing would look even cooler when I brightened up the subject a bit more. So for this I used the levels adjustment layer. And finally, the moment we all have been waiting for. I clipped a brand new pixel layer to the hair strains. I grabbed a white soft brush and highlighted particular hairs. And that turned out way better than I could have ever expected. Especially after adding the hologram. Before I show you the end result, if you want to get a chance of me editing your photos, make sure to submit your photos to edit at imrancy.com. Alright, now let me show you the end result. Alright, and here's the final result. Overall, I'm very happy with how this photo turned out. I actually have never tried a cyberpunk photo before, so this was all new to me as well. I definitely had a lot of fun editing your photos. So thanks Varun for submitting your photos. I'll send you back the result as soon as I can. Alright guys and that was it for the third episode of editing your photos. Thank you so much for watching this one. If you love this content overall make very sure to hit the subscribe button. It would mean the world to me and then I hope to see you in my next video. Peace.